Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kyra here with another Infinite Magic Grid video. And in today's video, I want to talk about burn teams. So I just built out a ton of burn heroes, and I feel like these are not talked about at all when it comes to this game. And for good reason, they're very specific heroes you need to have. They don't seem that good on paper, but I was hoping with some synergy here, and then also because I have Barry, which in my opinion is by far the best burn hero, I wanted to combine him with other burn heroes because they really synergize well together um, because of you know, just the nature of burn. So I wanted to try a few out. And then because of the hero quest, we ended up getting Eric. I got impatient and I was on like the last leg of it. I just bonded out to get him a little early because I wanted to see how good he was as well. And then I think one of the best burn heroes in the game, especially he's the, the best supplementary burn character with like Barry, for example, is Feist. Epic hero. Reason why I think he's good is his passive. Uh, and his not only his passive, but is a passive at exclusive three. So I tested it. That 12% more burn damage also applies to detonation damage. Just want to clear that up. And then the main thing is, is he's applying burn passively every wave. Because the main selling point of a burn team is going to be just big AOE damage. Because when it comes to dungeons, specifically, we have two waves and we have the bosses. So being able to handle those waves is very important because the damage is incredibly high. If you let them slip through, they're going to just one-shot you. Especially when you try pushing through after 30 here. They're going to 100% one-shot you. So you either need a very consistent cc -er, or you need very consistent massive damage that you can rely on on the first round and the second round. Then you got to worry about surviving the boss. Big benefit of having consistent big nukes is that you free yourself up of ever needing to worry about the cooldowns for Catherine, for example. You can just solely focus on her handling the boss, for example. So that's one of the major benefits of being able to have a good burn team and usually AOE damage, like direct AOE damage, like a margarita or whatever, is never going to come close to the amount of damage you need in PVE to be able to nuke these teams reliably. But burn potentially has that chance. So a couple things I just wanted to distill down. The whole point of this video is just, I did a ton of testing with burn. I tried them in clan boss, tried them in dungeons, and I just wanted to distill down my thoughts on the burn team. If they're worth building, who should build them? Stuff like that. That it is just going to be kind of an info dump of all the testing I've done. So feel free to stick around if you're interested, because that's going to be the entire purpose of this video. So because we got three of them built out, I do want to talk about some of the other ones that I don't have uh, and or didn't build. First one is Gunner. I do have him. I built him out. I think he's awesome. Before Barry, he was the only one that can apply and proc a burn at the same time. I think he's a very good character. He can also remove shields. So he's great in Tower of Mark. Very good character. I just didn't build him out for this. I feel like he would kind of overlap with Barry um, because you got a big AoE nuke. He kind of self-contains it. He applies and nukes himself. Whereas Feist is kind of an activator where applies it and then Barry comes over the top. And the reason why it's so good is because you have Barry applying three. He does three waves, three stages of this versus Gunner's two stages. So he's going to apply a burn, then proc the burn, and then apply the burn. But what if you already have burn applied without someone needing to go? That's two procs on the same turn. So I think that's very good. And then also every time he procs it, he has this gun passive here. Also, he gets extra stats just from having mastery. This guy is by far, in my opinion, the best burner. And it's not even close, in my opinion. Everyone else is just kind of supporting them. And then from the hero quest, we have Eric. I think he's good. I think he pairs well. Interesting thing about him is his passive is very similar to Barry's, but the bomb is actually an auto attack. So it's actually applying and or proccing a burn. Then you can call in Eric to go or Barry to go in constantly. So it's actually pretty fun. And this is what I wanted to try in clan boss because it would be constant. You know, you, you do detonation damage and then he comes over the top with his bomb, and then you have uh, Barry proccing again, and it's just constant proccing. You have Ben Austin calling them in, which then it makes them both auto attack. They both have burns, which both you know cause a detonation, and then their passives go off again. So it's just constant proccing, and then them attacking again. So I thought it would be a pretty fun thing to try to do. Also keep in mind the damage of the detonation comes from the person finishing the detonation, not from the initial stats of the person that started the burn. Um, if you guys were curious about that. Um, and then lastly, the one that I don't have that I wish I did is Anna. I think she can actually be really good for this. She does have this exclusive too, where the dot damage dealt by all allies by 20%. I don't know if this actually affects detonation damage. 
I didn't I have no way of testing this. Well, I actually do, but I just didn't because I don't have her. But this right here would have been sick because she does detonation damage on an AOE just guaranteed. And then that that I did test and it would call in um, Barry and Eric. So um, you, doing moves that just say detonation damage, call them in with their passives. And it even says in their passive, but I just want to bring that up just in case you guys were curious about that. Then, um, so I think she would have been sick to be able to try out with um, Barry, in my opinion. Because the ones I really like are the ones that have a burn on a high chance on their auto attack. And when they have a high chance like this, this is 80 percent. Or if you have enough effect hit, it's it's 100 um, percent. Anything 60 and over is 100 percent if you have enough effect hit over the enemy's effect resistance. So those are the ones I thought about. Basically, it all came down to I would. I tried three characters. I tried Feist, Eric, and Barry. Usually didn't work out because you need enough support in the team when I was doing dungeons and or uh, clan boss. So I want to talk about dungeons first. And I think the, the main selling point, let's just show a main selling point of this team here. And I did test this and I also tested the boss damage. It's just really tedious to get to that point. So I'm not going to show the boss, um, the, actually getting to the boss um, or finishing the boss, I should say. But the act of getting to the boss is super easy. And the benefit of this is going to be, notice how I don't have to use any of these cooldowns. I don't have to use space. I don't have to use Catherine. And so I'm just going to skip focus. And then we're going to, can even skip Feist if I wanted to. And just do this. Then I just completely nuke them. And then we come through here. Skip their cooldowns. Skip her cooldown. And then immediately get Barry to go again. And then he just nukes them again as well. So completely one shots them, completely obliter obliterates them there. Uh, on stage 26. So then the benefit of that is now I never had to manage their cooldowns. I don't have to worry about timings or anything like that because you absolutely need to have your cooldowns ready to go for this stage here against the boss. And then I would say something that's a little easier for this is probably going to be throwing in Paulin if you got him. So you can have, um, you can go here, maybe not space. I like space for uh, Ifrit, for sure. I think she's like the cheat code against Ifrit because his whole mechanic is super fast speed. Whereas if I go here, and I would say the hardest part of it is the, the, the guy on the right here. I would say this is by far the hardest part of this boss, especially because your main damage dealer is also really high in attack, um, and it makes it difficult to keep him alive if you're trying to nuke that person without while waiting for Catherine to cleanse it. And if you kind of have low damage, it's not going to work out. But if you throw in Pollen here, then you actually have a easy way to get around it. So here, let's show that and then potentially show the, the actual boss encounter. Um, so we'll do the same thing. Save all the cooldowns right here. Need absolutely none of it. Don't even really need that. You just want him for the passive. Completely nuke. Then we go here. Completely skip all cooldowns except you have focus and then completely nuke them. And this is so much faster than how it normally is. Then uh, we're going to still do this uh, here because I like to be able to prevent that first hit. It kind of sets you back if you don't have that, even though it's probably going to get stolen. Uh, we have enough tools here to be able to get around it. Okay, and then what we're going to do, I just want to be able to kill this really quick because and with the attack down as if it worked out to where Pollen was the one actually ahead. But here we can uh, just go like this because we were able to survive and have Catherine go to not worry about the ones on the left. But a lot of times you'll have like buff restriction or whatever from that person on the left and being able to just do this is actually really nice. You can just cleanse it all and then you get the health up. It makes it so much easier. So like that, that move there, or it, it's her other move. It is reduce their attack and a hundred percent chance to inflict res buff. So that one is a really good one to uh, get rid of while we're at it. And then what we're doing is we can just proc this and kill her. And then we're waiting for this stuff to fall off um, before we kill him. And then we can also just be, you know, cleansing it. And I like to check him really quick just to make sure because he's been alive for a while. He still has quite a long time before he can actually 
use his moves. And so that now we can actually get rid of this guy. So it, a lot of this is this right here, mainly, especially the, the speed run version of this is definitely something that is going to require a focus. And, but it's another character like Hazania that you can use for something like this. And I feel like I, I kind of made my point here. Uh, let's just kill him really quick. When it comes to being able to do rum, which I think is very cool that you actually have enough damage to be able to kill the waves easily and kill the boss. Like it's possible if you have a super unlucky account, you pulled no bleed heroes, no HP burn heroes. It is possible with burn to be able to do something like this. Uh, even without focus, I just think showing the kind of highlight version of this is cool. So I'm just going to skip this really quick and let's go into something else that we can show. I, I wanted to show uh, Eric plus um, Barry uh, without the, the focus. So we have this. Let's actually just show all three. So we'll do a team like this. Okay. Ideally, I wouldn't have any moves from her being done, but I think I'm fine. Here, let's just go. And then notice how they constantly call in each other to attack. And then we can do, I'll just do the middle one. And then he just completely nukes them. And now we have this version here. Um, I'm just going to do basically the same thing. I'm not a fan of the Santas here. Just completely one shot them. And then notice how it just keeps going. He just keeps procking. And then we just nuke them. And then now we're back on the boss again. Um, <clears throat> just like last time. This time what I'm going to do is try just to survive the hit and see what happens. Okay, and then we're going to do, uh, we're going to just wait. Let's see if we can. Oh no. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to just attack. Because the, the proc is actually potentially going to kill Barry. <laughs> uh, here, let me see. Tall enemies. No, it can't do that. Yeah. See. Ah. Uh, okay. So I think we're good. And then we do this. And then we survived. But it was close. And then we'll heal. And then now we can just target him. But the benefit being that we didn't have to like you worry about the um uh, the shield and stuff. So kind of fun. And then now you can see how this works when it comes to the constant proccing. So get the double proc there. It reapplies the burn, reapplies it. So super fun uh, to do something like that. Okay, well, AOE and then AOE. Well, old. Okay, and now we have something similar here. This would be significantly faster on the boss, but not nearly as reliable. So this is exactly what happened on the clan boss, where this was the idea, but instead of having Feist, what I ended up doing, well, in Pollen wasn't on there either, but you have the call-in from Ben Austin, which is a lot of fun too. So you have constant proccing of both passives of Barry plus Eric. And then you have the counterattack, it keeps it going. And then Eric's completely out of bombs, it took him to go, and he would be able to go more if he had more exclusives, but unfortunately, you know, that's just not gonna happen. I'm not gonna be exclusive to these guys. I just don't think it's, it's worth it at all. Um, but I think it's cool to see other teams are still viable. Not just the uh, the typical HP burn thing. I think a lot of people are thinking that it's just HP burn or bust, but I really don't think that's the case. You know, use an exclusive one version, exclusive zero versions, get an epic on here. Catherine's guaranteed. Pollen, if you've been playing, you know, people have been made, making like three day old accounts and were able to get pollen. So it's like this is a totally doable, reasonable team, in my opinion. 
Um, so I think that's, well, that's actually a pretty sick piece as well. And so I'm trying to think if there's anything else here when it comes to this, because I think that right there, normally I wasn't going to show the boss run, but that did basically a good highlight of what happened in the guild boss. I'll show you the team that I used. I did a lot of testing. These are a lot of keys here. So we did three keys here, had a pretty bad first one, then settled on this team being better. And it was about like an 80 million damage run. To give you an idea, a team is similar. Like if I put Nidrold in here, like normally my team is Nidrold, Slaville, and then Nicholas. And also a big thing is I didn't want to put Nicholas in any of my testing. I usually in dungeons replace Nicholas with um, space. And then because Nicholas is just an annoying character. Like when you see a Nicholas on a team, it's like, okay, if you didn't wheel out, then what's the point? So that's why I don't like Nicholas in my testing. But I ended up going with this team, and I thought I, I did the best with this, about 80 million. But if I had a Nid rolled in there, Nid rolled plus Nicholas, I do about 140 million uh, normally uh, on Guild Bus 5. Um, but I want to say that the damage I did here was pretty good. I was doing about 100 million in, on stage four, which was, you know, what I was doing before. Um, I ended up using a different team, but I think this is actually pretty good for what happened because. The last run was a Feist run instead of Slaville just to see what would happen if I put three burners on here. And it went terrible. It was only like 60 million, but or like 65 million or something like that. Because the first run I did was about 90. Then I ended up changing and adding a ton of effect to Eric. And then there's also a lot more complicated stuff too when it comes to like putting the the characters in the correct order for the when they get called into attack with um, the counterattack. And then also the call in with Ben Austin, making sure everything's layered correctly there. So it's, I was able to do 100 million with this team, which I think is actually pretty sick for a burn team. But, you know, obviously Nidroll is going to do way better. Like there's so many characters that are going to hit way harder in this situation. Like if I threw in, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other bleed characters here. Like if I threw in uh, this guy in his RO, he's going to probably do a ton more damage. Um, if I had to guess, you know, obviously Nidrold is going to do more Melia, his Anya. So it's like, not like, like I, I bet Maeve, um, Zia, Lucifer, you know, like that, this is not like a top 10, um, guild boss comp here by any means. But at the same time, I thought it did a respectable amount of damage for a debuff that no one really cares about in, in my opinion. So it's, uh, I like, I'm definitely a fan of burn. I do want to close out with a couple annoying things about burn. They all are separated on their affinity. They gain a lot from having more of the same ones. The only ones that really get any kind of synergy potential in Tower Mark is going to be Gunner plus Barry because they're, you know, obviously both Force Mark. But if I go here to Burn, look at their affinities. You have, you know, Green, Blue, um, Force, um, also Achman's on there too. But then Feist here, my favorite kind of activator is Green. But then there's no other green good burn heroes, which is a problem. Eric's blue. You know, so all these characters, you kind of want something else. Anna's red. So it's like really frustrating that even this one, you know, there's no other green good burn hero. So even like one of the best synergies you can't really use in Tower Mark, which is a total bummer. Then also, as you can see from there, they're completely different factions. You know, like there's only, if I go to back to burn, you have these two in Sword Over Guards. This one, okay, so Doom Legion gets a ton. For some reason, you know, it makes sense thematically that they would. And then I guess you can make something going on with Moo here, but I, I'm not really sold on Moo. I know he's he seems okay. I just don't like stuff like this where he inflicts burn by taking damage. The whole point of this is just to completely nuke them before that. So that's why I'm not the biggest fan of Moo. Maybe someone can make it work, but... That's what I've seen here when it comes to them. And then trying Eric out on his own, he's really, he really needs another burn hero, in my opinion, uh, to really make him go. Whereas with Barry, he's good enough on his own that he brings a lot to the team without anyone. So that's kind of how I see when it comes to these other parts of content. But when it comes to dungeons specifically, I really see that there is potential with burn heroes, in my opinion. And you can do it with just the burn heroes. You don't need to have crazy support heroes like Focus to make that work. And I think they're legitimately good. Not great, not amazing, but legitimately good is, is kind of my take on burn heroes. So 
that's going to do it for this video, guys. I wonder if you, I'm curious to hear your guys' comments down below when it comes to burn. And with that, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.